رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد My dear brothers and sisters welcome to another live edition of your program Guardians of the Pious Today's episode by the grace of Allah is number 223 in the seas of Guardians of the Pious May Allah the Almighty make us all amongst its dwellers Amen Um, today, inshallah, we shall begin a new chapter, chapter number 54. And this chapter deals with the virtues of crying and weeping out of fear from Allah the Almighty. We have a couple of uh, Quranic references in the beginning of the chapter. The first is of Surah Al-Isra and the second is of Surah Al-Najm. Let's check out the first reference of Surah Al-Isra, a number one in this uh, reference surah al-isra chapter number 17 uh, as you all know allah the almighty said وَيَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ يَبَكُونَ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ خُشُوعًا which means and they fall down on their faces يبكون, while weeping while crying and it increases their humility and humbleness so this ayah 109 is referring to certain people whom whenever they listen to the Quran it touches their hearts and they sense that this is a message from the Almighty Allah and they react with the words of the Quran with this message immediately by falling down in prostration by putting their faces on the ground out of humility and weeping out of fear from Allah the Almighty and that increases uh, their humility. The ayat begin with the fact that Allah the Almighty confirmed in Surah Al-Isra the fact that it is Allah who revealed unto his Prophet, peace be upon him, the glorious Quran. It says, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ with the truth we sent it down the Quran and with the truth it has been sent down وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا and we have not sent you O Muhammad but as مُبَشِّرًا a deliverer of glad tidings وَنَذِيرًا and as a warner that's a number 105 then in the following ayah Allah the Almighty uh, mentioned a very specific fact about the Quran which makes it distinct from the previous revelations from the Torah from Az Zabur from the gospel from the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa and the fact that the Quran was revealed gradually which means that this Quran and the word Quran literally means the most frequently read book or recitation. And indeed there is no other book on earth nor in history since Allah created Adam, peace be upon him, and until the Day of Judgment of course, which has been read or it will be read or recited as much as the Quran. It is not a book that you read it once and that's it. Then you add it to your bookcase. No. It is a book that you keep reciting it on a regular basis. And once you finish it, you start a new journey. And once you pile up mountains of good deeds, as a result of reciting the Quran, you start a new journey to build up another mountain or mountains of good deeds. Faraqanahu, which means the Quran was not revealed as one segment or as one book. It was not given to Muhammad similar to the tablets 
which were given to Moses, peace be upon him, when he, as the Quran says, وَأَلْقَ الْأَلْوَاحَ وَفِي نُسْخَتِهَا هُدًا that the tablets were given to Moses, peace be upon him, all at once. But the Quran, فَرَقَنَاهُ it has been sent down gradually. It was divided in portions. The Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years in Surah Al-Furqan. Allah the Almighty recounted what the non-believers said, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَأُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا They were asking an objection question. Why the Quran was not sent down to him like the previous revelations as one book? He keeps giving us with the dropper, verses after verses, or ayat, or maybe small chapters, or a whole chapter. But the Quran keeps revealing. He said, كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَرَتَّلْنَاهُ تَرْتِيلًا So the purpose of revealing the Quran gradually over a period of 23 years, which is the entire period of the prophethood, is to keep firm the heart of the Prophet وسلم, and accordingly his followers. It was revealed gradually in portions. And the Prophet ﷺ was ordered to recite it in this fashion. وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And it was revealed in portions. Then, afterward, Allah the Almighty ordered Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to tell the Meccan pagans that if you believe in the Qur'an, it will not make it more glorious. And if you disbelieve in the Qur'an, he will not put it down or makes it insignificant. No. قُلْ أَمِنُوا بِهِ أَوْ لَا تُؤْمِنُوا Tell them, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, whether you believe in it or not, it will not really change the glory of the Qur'an. It will not affect the Qur'an, the word of Allah. And accordingly, it will not affect Allah's domain or not. Then he stated the following fact, based on a story which I will share with you. Those who have been given the knowledge before it was revealed. So the ayah is referring to whom? The Jews and the Christians. The people of the scripture, the scholars of the Jews and the Christians, those who truly believed in their genuine books and have been anxiously waiting for the prophecy which was revealed in the Torah and in the Gospel, the coming and the emergence of the last messenger. إِذَا يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Once the Qur'an is recited upon those true scholars of the Jews and the Christians, يَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ سُجَّدًا Al-Azqan is plural of Zaqn, which is the chin. So once they hear the recitation of the Qur'an, they fall down in prostration to the point that their chins are about to touch the ground as an extensive description of how sincere they are in their prostration. Why? Because, wait a minute, this is a message from Allah the Almighty. So they fall down in prostration. In Surah Al-Jinn, Allah the Almighty said, when the jinn heard the recitation of the Prophet Sallallahu to the Qur'an, they said, قَالُوا إِنَّ سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّجْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَنْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا They immediately believed in the message of Muhammad, peace be upon him, because of the message, because of the words that they heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, reciting. It captured the hearts and the minds. Many non-believers at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and after, they only accepted Islam and their hearts were open to accept the truth upon listening to the Qur'an. Today, many without even knowing the meaning of the Qur'an, listening to the beautiful recitation of the Qur'an, it captures their attentions. It possesses their hearts and minds. Why? Because this is not any recitation. This is not a song or a chantation. This is the word of Allah, the Almighty. وَيَقُولُونَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا Now we're coming to 108. When they hear the recitation of the Qur'an, they say, سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا Glory be to our Lord. إِنْ كَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّنَا لَمَفْعُولًا Indeed, 
the promise of our Lord was to be fulfilled. Then our ayah, which Imam al-Nawawi listed in the beginning of the chapter of the verses of crying out of the fear of Allah. وَيَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ يَبْكُونَ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ خُشُوعَ To confirm how they react. How did the scholars of Christianity and Judaism, those who truly believed in their genuine messages, when they heard the Quran, they reacted by يَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ يَبْكُونَ They fall down on their faces in sujood, in prostration, وَيَزِيدُهُمْ خُشُوعَ And it increases their humility. Many Jewish rabbis, once they heard the recitation of the Quran, they accepted Islam. Once they heard the preaching of the Prophet ﷺ, they accepted Islam, such as, for example, the, the great Jewish rabbi of his time, Abdullah ibn Salam, may Allah be pleased with him, who said that when Muhammad, peace be upon him, entered al Medina, the first statement I heard from him, he was like many others. They went to check on him, to check on this man. So the Prophet does not know their personalities, doesn't know who's a Jewish rabbi and who's an ordinary person. But they know this person may be the last messenger, whom they have been waiting for. And that's why they immigrated to this land, to Yathrib, before uh, the migration was called Yathrib, now to Medina. So some of them, those who are sincere, when they heard him, they accepted faith. Such as Abdullah ibn Salam who said, فَكَانَ أَوَّلُ مَا سَمَحْنَ The first statement I heard from him, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَفْشُ السَّلَامِ أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامِ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ O people, I advise you to spread peace. Greet people with a greeting of peace. Spread peace in your community, amongst yourselves, amongst your community members. أَطْعِمُ الطعام. Feed the poor. Honor your guest. Feed people. Don't worry about spending because Allah, God, the Almighty, Allah will give you more. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ And at night when people are asleep, get up to pray. Very comprehensive religion. It doesn't only deal with the acts of worship in private, but that should reflect also on your behavior towards people likewise. So he accepted Islam. Abdullah ibn Salam. In Surah al maida we have uh, the very famous ayah in which Allah the Almighty says in Surah al maida لَا تَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودَ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا وَلَا تَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى Wait, let's pause here. The, the first ayah is saying that most certainly you'll find the most violent people in their enmity towards Muslims, Al-Yahud, Waladina Ashraku, and those who associated partners to Allah in worship, Al-Yahud and the polytheists. And most surely you'll find the closest in friendship of people to the believers, Al-Ladina Qalu inna Nasara, those who said that we are Christians. Nasara that they supported Jesus, peace be upon him. When he said, Man ansari ilallah. When they said, Man ansari ilallah. Qala al hawariyuna nahnu ansaru Allahi amanna billahi wa shahdi anana muslimun. So al ansar, those who supported Jesus, peace be upon him. Now when they, when, when, when they heard the message of Muhammad, when they heard the true revelation, the Quran, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعَ Once they hear what has been revealed to the messenger, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ The Qur'an, تَرَى You will see their eyes overflowing with tears. And then they will remark saying, رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّهِدِينَ This is the true message. This is indeed the word of Allah. Our Lord, bear witness that we've accepted faith and we followed this Quran and we followed your messenger. فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّهِدِينَ So write down our names and record us among those who bear witness to your oneness. And believe in your message that you sent to your messenger, peace be upon him. 
That also happened. And Najashi, the Abyssinian king, who was a just king, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, approximately on the sixth year after the prophethood, when the persecution uh, of the Meccan chiefs and the non-believers have been very intense and was very severe. So the Prophet ﷺ said to his companions, I advise you to migrate to Abyssinia, Al-Habasha, فَإِنَّ بِهَا مَلِكًا عَادِلًا لَا يُظْلَمُ عِنْدَهُ أَحَدٍ There is a just king in Abyssinia. No one will be wronged in his presence. As long as you're living under his umbrella, you're living under his rule. In Abyssinia, Ethiopia currently, no one will be dealt with unjustly. Subhanallah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that about this king who was Christian. As Muslims, we should be fair. If somebody is just, if somebody is honest, even if he's a Jew, even if he's Christian, even if he's an atheist, we have to distinguish be, between uh, his faith and his behavior. Yes, we would love for him to be rightly guided. We would feel the happiest if this person was to crown his manners and his good attitude with believing in the oneness of Allah the Almighty, being monotheistic, perfectly fine. But the Prophet ﷺ acknowledged the fact that this king is Christian, but he is just. So he ordered his companions, if you like to find a safe place, migrate to Abyssinia. So they sailed and they managed to reach to Abyssinia. There was two kind of migrations to Abyssinia. The first Hijrah and the second Hijrah in two consecutive years. And the first Hijrah, about 16 people, including Ruqayya, the Prophet's daughter, traveling with her husband Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him. And in the second, a little over 300. Now, brothers and sisters, Al-Najashi, whom the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, without seeing him, without meeting him, Allah the Almighty revealed to him that this guy is just. Look at his justice. When he heard the word of Allah the Almighty, he cried, and the monks and the priests around him cried. The Meccans delegated Amr ibn al-As, who is still a non-Muslim. And he was a chief negotiator, and he was very clever, he was very eloquent and outspoken. So they carried a lot of gifts. In other words, bribes, so that they can bribe the counselors and the advisors of the king to convince him to arrest the Muslims and send them back to Mecca in order to be persecuted or killed. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? About an Najashi, فإن بها ملكا عادلا لا يظلم عنده أحد. There is a just king there. No one will be wrong. No one will be dealt with unjustly in his presence. Amr ibn al-As and his delegation, they presented the gifts, and the king honored them. What is the matter? He heard from them. He said before passing a judgment, I gotta listen to these guys first. So he invited them. And Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, Ja'far is Ali's brother and the Prophet's cousin, was the Muslim's representative. So he spoke the truth from the Qur'an about what they believe and the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Najashi, the Abyssinian king, liked it and said, you guys are free to live in my country as long as you want. Then he disappointed Amr ibn al-As and the other a negotiator, and he said that uh, I won't be able to send them back with you. These guys are okay. So Hamad ibn al thought about it and he said, you know what, tomorrow I shall nail them. He came to the king next day and said, I forgot to tell you that they insult Jesus and his mother because the king was Christian. So again, he invited Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and his people and said, what do you guys say about Jesus and Mary? So Ja'far ibn Abu Talib, we say what we, he said, we say what Allah says in the Quran. He said, bring it on. So he recited Surah Maryam, the beginning of Surah Maryam. When he was reciting, and Najashi and his priests and monks were crying. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمَّعِ Whenever they listen to the recitation of the Quran, which has been revealed to the messenger, you see their eyes overflowing with tears. Then when he sent 
five monks and seven priests to Al Madina to listen to the Prophet Sallallahu and to learn from him again when the Prophet was reciting upon them they were crying that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's why the ayah says وَلَا تَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَلَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ نَصَرَ We're gonna take a short break we do have a technical problem and we'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes please stay tuned Rasulallah Habiballah Rasulallah Habiballah Allah Allah Don't let me stray Please come away Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. They actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind. Uh, so now I want to start off with my right-hand side, uh, Brother Ahmed. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives would you say that's okay, a reason absolutely that? that's true some yes. people just resort to drug as the last option because they, they get themselves straight out and they're instead of depression but they don't know where to turn for help sports per se is like a, a communal social activity whereas mm -hmm. it, you know, it collects the community together and it, it bonds brotherhoods together you know mm -hmm. it's it's very social in this aspect where you interact with you know, your teammates or your players in a team. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely away, away from, from it. it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. strives to remain the premier English language Islamic channel in the world and to do so we need your input send us your thoughts suggestions and feedback through email at feedback at hoda.tv Hoda TV is committed to helping others so why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV <laughs> Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. Is the cleaver of the daybreak. <laughs> then split the earth in clefts. <laughs> Is indeed a sign for people who reflect reflections <laughs> There is not an animal in the earth or a flying creature flying on two wings. But they are nations like you. We have neglected nothing in the book. Then to their Lord they will be gathered. Have you not seen how God wafts the clouds? He is the cleaver 
of the daybreak. <laughs> then split the earth in clefts. <laughs> is indeed a sigh for people who reflect. Reflections. When waking up, all praise is for Allah who gave us life after having taken it from us, and unto him is the resurrection. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever awakes at night and then says, None has the right to be worshipped except Allah, alone, without associates. To him belongs all sovereignty and praise, and he is over all things wholly capable. How perfect Allah is, and all praise is for Allah, and none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Allah is the greatest, and there is no power nor might except with Allah, the Most High, the Supreme. And then supplicates, O oh my Lord, forgive me. He then will be forgiven. Al Walid said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers beginning with the air code 0020238551 or 132. The email address is gardens at huda.tv. There we go with the second ayah in um, the chapter which deals with uh, the excellence of weeping out. Uh, of fear from Allah the Almighty that is two ayat by the end of Surah Al-Najm 59 and 60 59 and 60 the ayat the two verses read as أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبَكُونَ but in order to comprehend uh, these two ayat and why they were put in this context as a reference, I'd like to go um, earlier, a couple ayat earlier, like from ayah number 56. In this ayah, Allah the Almighty says, هَذَا نَذِيرٌ مِّنَ النُّذُرِ الْأُولَىٰ أَزِفَةِ الْآزِفَةِ لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةٌ هذا it refers to the glorious Qur'an نذير من النذر الأولى This is a warner of the old warners يعني one of the revelations of Allah to warn you against the reckoning day أزفة الأزفة is similar to إذا وقعت الواقعة which means the calamity of the day of judgment is approaching near. لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةٌ Which means, none shall remove it other than Allah the Almighty. There shall be none besides Allah to remove it. And also it is similar to, لَا يُجَلِّهَا لِوَقَتِهَا إِلَّا هُو and in Allah عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ which also means, so these are uh, several meanings to لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةِ either that no one shall remove its calamity but Allah uh, no one knows its exact time but Allah لَا يُجَلِّهَا لِوَقَتِهَا إِلَّا هُو no one shall bring it forward other than Allah and so on then Allah the Almighty says after he said, لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً And look at the powerful words that Allah is using to refer to the glory of the day. أَزِفَةً لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً Then he presented their central question. 
condemning their misbehavior when they hear about the hereafter. أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ Do you then wonder at this recitation, the Qur'an? وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ And you laugh at it, not weep out of fear from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is criticizing their behavior. Then he said, وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ That is in 61. While you are indulging in vain, enjoying the light, Abdullah ibn Abbas said that the Meccan pagans used to distract the attention of people from listening to the Quran so that when the Prophet would be reciting, they will sing songs, they would clap and whistle, they would raise their voices in order to distract the attention of the audience not to listen to the Quran. They would mock at it and laugh at it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبَكُونَ Like the opposite is supposed to be your reaction. You're supposed to be weeping out because the Qur'an is bringing you the reality, the shortness and the transitness of this life, the transient nature of this life, which will end up with reckoning, with hisab. وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ While you're playing, enjoying, in negligence. فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوا Rather you should make sujood, bow down in prostration to Allah and serve Him with uh, sincere devotion. Worship Him with sincere devotion. You all know that Surah Al-Najm when the Prophet وسلم, recited this surah upon the Meccan pagans. Every one of the audience, even the non-believers, the Meccan chiefs, when they heard what Allah the Almighty is saying by the end of the surah, أَزِفَتِ الْأَزِفَةِ لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةِ أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبَكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ Then he said, فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوا So all of them fell in prostration. They were non-believers, but they prostrated themselves out of fear. Even if somebody couldn't make it, he picked up some dust from the earth and he put it on his forehead as a sign of compliance. That's why the Muslims who immigrated the first time to Abyssinia heard the news that, Oh Allahu Akbar, everybody in Mecca accepted Islam, Abu Jahl and Umayyad ibn Khalaf and Abi Sufyan and all of that. So they returned. But they did not actually accept Islam. It was the soundness, the powerful effect of the ayat which Allah the Almighty, um, uh, which the Prophet Sallallahu recited upon uh, the audience. They heard the word of Allah the Almighty, so they could not but prostrate themselves in compliance with the command of the last verse, verse number 62 of Surah An-Najm, فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوا So they immediately prostrated themselves, but they did not actually accept Islam. In the Quran also, it tells us that the Meccan chiefs, in order to counter-attack the, uh, the great effect and influence of the Qur'an, they couldn't. So sometimes they would make, uh, if the Prophet is reciting Qur'an somewhere and people are listening, they would bring a storyteller in order to narrate a story or some fiction so that people would uh, have some amusement. But again, people would still go out to listen to the Prophet and not listen to the storyteller. So they said, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ You gotta stop people from listening to the Qur'an. And you gotta make noise if Muhammad or any of his followers happen to recite Qur'an in public. Make noise, whistle, clap, sing songs, dance, so that people will be instructed. That is the only way that you can achieve success. لَعَلَّكُمْ in order to be winners and successful, in order to overcome the effect of the Qur'an on people's hearts. So the reference is in the two ayat, 59 and 60. Allah the Almighty is condemning the misbehavior of those pagans and non-believers. وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ Allah is warning you. And He's saying that أَزِفَةِ الْأَزِفَةِ And there will be reckoning, and there will be hisab, there will be punishment. And you make fun at that? You laugh at it? 
وتضحكون ولا تبكون you're supposed to be crying not laughing at it now with the first hadith in the chapter uh, chapter number 54 which deals with the excellence of weeping out from the fear of Allah the Almighty the first hadith <coughs> is hadith number 446 446 narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud may Allah be pleased with him and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud again was one of the companions who used to accompany the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and uh, serve him and he was mm, perhaps the only companion who was allowed to enter with him wherever he goes because he was like his servant and he would carry his miswak and he, was, he would carry his khuf, his shoes he would wait for him until he would wake up and assist him so Abdullah ibn Mas'ud have learned a great deal from the Prophet peace be upon him to the point Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was a very petite companion, very skinny and kind of shorty. And all of that doesn't matter. What matters is the heart. The heart. So one day as the companions were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, why don't you pick up some date fruits, uh, rutab, from the date palm tree. Everybody was good at it, so immediately he started climbing. He climbed the date palm tree. <clears throat> As he was climbing, his shins were shown. And they were very skinny, very thin. Some of the companions laughed at it. The Prophet ﷺ paid attention to that. He said, تضحكون, Why are you laughing at? Because his uh, legs are scrutiny and skinny by Allah. Before Allah, those legs are heavier than the mountains of Uhud. Here the scale is not the scale of the actual weight of the person. It is the scale of the heart, sincerity, and the good deeds. So before Allah, this guy is greater than and heavier than the mountain of Uhud. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Like in the other hadith, he said, يُؤْتَى بِالرَّجُلِ السَّمِينِ الْعَظِيمِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَزِنُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بعوضة. A person who is very muscular, he used to spend six hours every day building muscles, get injections from here, eating certain food and lifting weight. But subhanAllah, this person was like a cattle. He has no concern about faith or belief or Allah or hereafter. So on the day of judgment, the Prophet said, لا يزن عند الله جناح بعوضة. This heavyweight guy would not even weigh the weight of the wing of a fly. Very insignificant. Now the hadith which is narrated by this great companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with them, and he was one of the huffaz of the Quran, the reciters, and those who memorized the Quran in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa عن ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قال لي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأ علي القرآن قلت يا رسول الله اقرأ عليك وعليك أنزل قال إني أحب أن أسمعه من غيري فقرأت عليه سورة النساء حتى جئت إلى هذه الآية فكيف إذا جئنا من كل أمة بشهيد وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا. This ayah of Surah An-Nisa, chapter number four, verse number forty-one. قال حسبك الآن فالتفت إليه فإذا عيناه تذرفان متفق عليه. عبد الله بن مسعود May Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him once, Ya Abdullah, recite the Qur'an to me. I said, O Messenger of Allah, shall I recite the Qur'an to you when it has been revealed to you? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yes, Recite it to me 
I love to hear it recited by others. So I recited it to him a portion from I recited to him a portion from Surah An Nisa until I reach the ayah which reads فكيف إذا جئنا من كل أمة بشهيد وجئنا بك على هؤلاء الشهيدة which means how will it be then when we bring from each nation a witness and we bring you O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم as a witness against these people then the Prophet peace be upon him said enough for now when I looked at him I saw his eyes were shedding tears the hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari wa Muslim, may Allah have mercy on both of them. So brothers and sisters, here we have a very interesting situation. Many people ask, is listening to the Quran considered an act of worship? Of course. And Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, may Allah have mercy on him, used to consider the word of listening to the Quran is similar to their word of reciting Quran. Not only that, sometimes a person, sometimes a person have a greater khushua and concentration and a better pondering over the Quran while he's listening than while he's reciting. Why? Because our scholars of the Quran and the sciences of the Quran, they said, al qari'u kal halib Al-Qari, they resemble the person who recites the Qur'an, is like the one who's doing the actual milking, the milk from the other of the cow or whatever. He's the one who's making the effort, making sure that he will bring the milk in a very neat way. While as sami the audience, the one who listens to the reciter, is like a sharib. So we have somebody who milks the milk and somebody who drinks that milk. He drinks it with ease. He doesn't encounter any hardship of milking the milk, putting it in a container, bring it in a nice glass. Uh, he just drinks and he enjoys it. Astami is like that. You know, we all travel a lot, we all drive, we all go to work back and forth. If you keep in your vehicle, or if you keep in your MP3, MP4, um, on your phone, some recitation of the Quran, maybe the entire Quran by melodious reciters, such as a Sheikh Muhammad Sadiq al Minshawi, Sheikh Al Husari, Sheikh Abd al Basit. You know, I know that there are other great shaykh, but I'm saying about the most perfect when it comes to recitation with the ahkam, especially for those who would like to learn how to recite properly. The recitation enters the hearts directly. And it affects the audience to the point that you can't ponder over it. And there are two different ways to recite the Quran. There is something called Quranun Muratal and another form which is Mujawad. The Mujawad is the slow, the slow rhythm with this very melodious voice. The murattal, both they observe the ahkam of tajweed properly, but al-mujawad with a slow rhythm. So when you listen to that, before you go to sleep, when you put the Qur'an on and you listen to it, you can but enjoy your, your dreams, you enjoy your sleep. If you play the Qur'an in, in your car while you're driving, because you're making a physical effort, if you're working on a machine, if you're, not if you're studying, because if you're studying, you need to think about what you're reading read in the newspaper, browse in your Facebook page or the social media. You can be doing, listen to the Quran while you're absent-minded. This is a lack of respect to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, recite the Quran. He said, how am I supposed to recite the Quran to you while the Quran was revealed to you? We, we listen to your recitation, not the other way around. But the Prophet ﷺ said, rather recite it, I like to listen to it from other than myself. And it wasn't the first time once Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, a great companion of the Prophet ﷺ, was reciting the Qur'an. And when he finished, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, I love your recitation. 
I enjoyed it so much. He said, were you listening to me? I was kind of embarrassed. Rasulullah, peace be upon him, is listening to my recitation until I finished. He said, Ya Rasulullah, had I known that you were listening, لَحَبَّرْتُهُ لَكَ تَحْبِيرًا I would really recite it in a very melodious voice. And I would, he said, you have been given Mizmaram min mazamiri Dawood. The word Mizmar literally means a float. Dawood alayhi salam used to recite as Zabur, the book which has been given to Prophet David, peace be upon him. And he had the most melodious voice to the point that whenever he would make his praises and recite from Az Zabur, the mountains, the birds, the wild animals, even the fish in the sea will pass to join him in his glorification and his recitation. So he said, you've been given a melodious voice similar to that of Prophet David. لَقَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ مِزْمَارًا مِنْ مَزَامِيرِ Dawood. So he taught us to listen to the beautiful recitation of the Qur'an. It is sad that people only listen to the Qur'an, some people, in Ramadan, in Taraweeh. And they shop for the fastest recitation. They say, this Imam finishes the whole package in 35 minutes. Aisha, Sunnah, Taraweeh, and Witr in 35 minutes. So they drive a further distance in order to listen to a shorter recitation, or the Imam is so fast. I can't imagine somebody who recites a whole para in the Quran, in the prayer, uh, in less than um, an hour, an hour 20 minutes, let alone reciting in the Isha, and the Sunnah, and Taraweeh, and which 30, 35 minutes. That is not befitting. أَفَلَا تَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَلُهَا As Allah the Almighty said in Surah Muhammad. So in order to benefit from the Qur'an, you have to pay attention to it. Assalamu alaikum. We have Sister Zahra from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. I'm sorry, Sister, I wasn't paying attention. They have been alerting me, but I uh, didn't pay attention until late. Please try again. Now I can hear you. Um, so he teaches us that he listened to the Qur'an from Jibreel alayhi salam directly. And Angel Gabriel listened to the Qur'an directly from Allah the Almighty. And he is the one who taught his companions how to recite the Qur'an. And now he asked his companions to recite the Qur'an before him. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud picked up in his surah and it was surah An-Nisa, the women. And he started reciting some ayat until he came across an ayah which reads as ayah number 41 of Surah An-Nisa. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا uh, It is very important also to pay attention to the following ayah. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَعَصَوا الرَّسُولَ لَوْ تُسَوَّى بِهِمُ الْأَرْضُ وَلَا يَكْتُمُونَ اللَّهَ حَدِيثًا Every ummah, how is it then when we bring from every ummah a shaheed? A shaheed means a witness. And you would be a witness on your ummah. Al-ummah is two types. Ummah al-da'wah wa ummah al-ijabah. Ummah al-da'wah is the nation who should be addressed by the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, that means every living human being, Buddhist, Hindu, Jews, Christians, atheists, uh, far worshippers, those who worship rats, everyone is included in Ummah al-Da'wah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا لِلنَّاسِ كَافَةً وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Yeah, his message is to everyone, to every human being, that's called Ummah al-Da'wah. And Ummah al-Ijabah are those who accepted his da'wah. So they became Muslims. The Prophet, peace be upon him, similar to all the Prophets before him, peace be upon them, will be witnesses. Because Allah the Almighty will bring the Prophet and ask him, did he deliver the message? Yes, I did. 
who believed in you, who followed you, who accepted faith, who believed in the oneness of Allah, and who rejected that. So the messenger will testify up to his life, um, uh, up to the last moment of his life. Then afterward, he has nothing to do with what his people have done, whether they've changed or they remain steadfast. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Jesus, peace be upon him, will say, مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيَّا I only ordered them to worship Allah alone and not to associate with him any in worship. He said, وَكُنْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ I was a witness over them so long as I was among them. I was living among them. فَلَمَّا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ to worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. وَكُنْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ So I was a witness over them as long as I was amongst them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ Then after you've taken me and elevated me unto you, you were a raqib, the watchful. وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ And you are a witness over everything anyway. Whether I was amongst them or after he elevated me. So now, الشُّهَدَاء are two types. الأنبياء والرسل And they bear witness over the people as long as they were living with them. Then when they depart this life, there comes the role of العلماء, the true scholars, the practicing scholars. Whom the Prophet ﷺ said, العلماء ورثة الأنبياء. The true scholars are the ears of the prophets. وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا درهما ولا دينارا وإنما ورثوا العلم. The prophets did not leave behind anything to be inherited as far as wealth or material, properties or money or cash or gold or silver. No, they only left العلم, the useful knowledge. فَمَنْ أَخَذَاهُ أَخَذَاهُ بِحَظٍ وَاسَعٍ So after the prophets, including Prophet Muhammad wasallam, pass away, there comes the role of the ulama to bear witness. Have you delivered the message? And who followed you? And who rejected your message? The Prophet wasallam, when he heard that, he cried. He started crying and he said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, stop right there. Because he wanted to ponder over this ayah. The responsibility of being a shaheed over his ummah. And on the day of judgment, when he would see some people will be standing on the distance from the basin, al haut of the Prophet ﷺ, he would recognize them by their names, by their figures as Muslims who would say, Oh Allah, those are my people, my ummah. So Allah the Almighty will tell him that إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا أَحْدَثُوا بَعْدَكَ You have no idea what they have done after you. They have changed. They have innovated. They have changed their faith. So at that the Prophet ﷺ will disown them. Why? Because he was only a shaheed so long as he was living amongst his people. We've studied before the lengthy hadith of Nuh alayhi salam. When he would bear witness and testify against his own people, then afterward his people will deny his message and Nuh السلام, would demand the shahada of the ummah of the Prophet وسلم, So Allah the Almighty will ask us to deliver the shahada. Do you guys bear witness that Nuh have been sent to his people and he delivered the message properly? Ummatu Muhammad, Ummatu Al-Ijaba will say, will answer in the affirmative. And how did you know? Because your Prophet have informed us and have recited the Quran upon us that you said in it, Inna arsanna Nuhan ila qawmah. We have sent Nuh, peace be upon him, unto his people. Brothers and sisters, we ran out of time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to what is best to make us ponder over his words to make us comply with the message, the most beautiful message, the word of Allah, which is the Qur'an. I say this word, and I pray for you, 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 and I pray for you. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rasulallah, Habib Allah, Allah, our God is the greatest, the one and only glory, 
to him. He only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. Allah our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to him. He only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgiving all about it in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price Rasulullah 